Well, with all the divisions um, that have been witnessed in Jubilee and in the Mount Kenya region, some of the worst wars have been between rival women's groups. Do they have their own agenda for the coming BBI or have they been reduced to flower girls to escort different rival parties? And will Embrace continue to meet Inua Mama head on even after President Kenyatta spoke decisively in Sagana? calling for a cessation to those hostilities. Well, joining me now in studio is Honorable Priscilla Nyokabi, who's a commissioner at the National Gender Inequality Commission and former Nyeri County woman representative, possibly mm -hmm. has ambitions in 2022. Mm -hmm. I will not ask for now, <laughs> but welcome ready. to Punchline. Thank you. Thank um, you. Let's start um, with what the president said at Sagana, and he has uh, publicly lamented that leaders are calling each other names, and as we've mentioned, some of that worst name calling has been coming from the rival uh, women's groups. In your opinion, after the president spoke, is it time now for Embrace and Inua Mama to stop their nationwide campaigns? Well, I'm not quite able to speak for Inua Mama. I think they'll speak for themselves. But for Embrace, I think that we're going to take a different turn. Uh, we were always very keen on the BBI. I think that remains our focus now. And we have never been part of the insults. Uh, it's just to say that there is also an effort for a common women agenda. Uh, between all of the women leaders, who so not just embrace, not just in Mwamama, but many other women leaders, private sector, from the academia, from the media. Uh, so there's going to be an effort around how women get to be part of the BBI process. But would you and, say it is good form? It is good form for Inua Mama to also. I think hold. it will be important for Inua Mama to also be part of this. Okay. Remember, what is at risk now is the women reps position. And while the women rights position might be taken away in a, in a due process, I think the answer is how then do we get women representation in a country where election of women is difficult? And if the women rep position is at risk, then both Embrace and Inua Mama must be concerned by that issue. Okay. And so I see, I see a common approach towards uh, the rest of the BBI processes uh, with the Inua Mama where women agenda is concerned. We might differ on a couple of other things, yeah. but I think where the women agenda is concerned, we will as much as possible find common uh, linkages. All right, and we'll talk about those affirmative sure. action seats and what your position will be, mm -hmm. but um, are you concerned that it, it appears to, consensus building appears to be coming rather late in the day. Of course, we do know that Embrace did uh, present uh, a position sure. before the BBI committee when it was going around the country in Wamama didn't. But having said that, in the public domain, it has been such a fractious and uh, hostile debate. Uh, do you think it's going to cost you? Is there still time to reach consensus before BBI, which if going by what the president said in Sagana on Friday, seems to be imminent any moment now. Yes, I think that we have lost time, but uh, it's never, you know, sort of you don't look at what time has passed. I think you look at what time is remaining. I think that uh, the next phase, which is really the more legal phase, remember this has been the consultation yeah. phase. Uh, so whatever happened in the consultation, and I'm happy that the Embrace members were able to put their views, and they were not just views of Embrace, they were actually views of the women uh, generally, whether they came to the BBI or didn't come to BBI. But I think going forward, there's going to be a reason for us to find ways of working together. And I also agree with the president, the insults must go. We just must be able to debate on issues. We must be able to debate on differences and uh, different divergent points mm -hmm. without name calling. And it's really, really bad when the name calling is from women. Okay. I think we also must leave personal lives out of this debate. Mm -hmm. uh, we come into this debate at, as leaders, as uh, nationalists. So there is no reason to go after my person or after my husband and after my children. I think that those are going to be no-go zones. So I like what the bishop said in, in Sagana, political hygiene. Mm -hmm. So I think also going forward is going to be the need for political hygiene across everybody who's debating. Okay. A lot of political hygiene, I think that we're going to need. Will be necessary. Sure. Um, uh, you've talked about uh, the plans to develop a common women agenda. Um, have you formally incorporated uh, both camps into these plans? And do women have, uh, if you like, irreducible minimums? And what would those be? Yes, women have irreducible minimums. Um, or sort of uh, points of negotiation. Uh, one of the best ones for us is that the census just said that women are 50.5% of the population. So at 50.5% of the population, I think it is important that any review process now uh, puts the women representation, women appointive positions at 50%, seeing that we are already 50.5%. In fact, we are willing mm. to give up the 0.5, but if we could just get 50-50 of the positions uh, in the processes and also 50-50 in terms of representation, 50-50 in terms of uh, decision-making, 50-50 in appointive 
for 50 50 even at community level yeah. uh, the meeting in Sagana was for example very representative of women the elders mm -hmm. brought women the religious leaders the professional groups so that's what we are hoping to see in the in the next phase of Kenya but also remembering that we have the not more than two-thirds in the 2010 Constitution so one of our quick areas of convergence is protecting the gains that we already have in the 2010 Constitution and I think that we have to continuously do together so but you haven't we been might able have to realize out. not more than two-thirds in the Constitution what to. hope do you have well, you know in the BBI that that would be any better better political will uh, the handshake provides an opportunity for resolution of inclusion and for us gender inclusion as well so inclusion in the sense of the tribes and in the sense of ethnic communities but also inclusion of women in the governance of our country and both President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta and former Prime Minister Raila Odinga will support us on this agenda well you know the convert argument is that they could have done that as well in and parliament. They did, and they did, to their, and to they did to their, they did just that they couldn't get the numbers in parliament. All right. But what we are looking at now is not just having formulas in parliament. Okay. We are looking at having representation in the body of the document. We now want to be mainstream. We no longer want special seats. We okay. want to be mainstream. F final, the, final question. Sure. Real qu quick question. Uh, as a commissioner of the Gender and Equality Commission, there's been concern of partisanship uh, by belonging to the Embrace Group, which you have actively fraternized with yourself and the Gender CAS. Uh, Rachel Shebesh, um, how do you respond to allegations that state resources have been used so far for partisan political campaigning? No state resources have not been used, that we can say. Uh, but about our own inclusion in the Embrace movement, Gender Commission has a rule and a law and is required by law to promote gender equality. And when you promote gender equality, you could use any different platforms that exist. So one of the platforms that existed was the Embrace platform in, in the sense of the handshake had come and the handshake could be a handshake of men. We must make it a handshake of women as well. And so when I'm in this space, I am very much doing my gender work as a gender commissioner. All right. That